time. It's your 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 time. Just be the one, the one you would call on. What are you waiting for? Do for yourself. Just be that force. If you can see it now, you'll be self-actualized. We are, we are, we are the visionaries. Have you lost your way? What are you waiting for? Let's think. What is inside of you? What are you? Why I keep praying? Why I keep begging? Stop begging. Why I keep waiting? Why it only leads to more confusion? So just be. Be that which you call upon. Be that which you wait upon. You are the self actualized savior. You. Nothing is flying in the sky waiting to come and do the work that you came to the planet to do. Yeah. You be Haru. Yeah. You be Ma'at. Yeah. You be Seto. Yeah. You be Asol. Yeah. You be Oset. Yeah. You be Sobek. Yeah. You be Shango. Yeah. You be Oshun. Yeah. You be Yemoja. Yeah. You be Oduluwa. You be Obatala. You be Yami. You be Eshu. You be Ogun. You be Oya. You be Nanan Buruko. You be Shiva. You be Palo. You be Krishna. You be Kepra. You be Ganesha. You be Dionysus. You be Hermes, you be Hanuman, you be Jehuti, you be Anku, you be Brahma, you be Pan, you be Zeus, you be Vishnu, you be Haru Khalis, you be Kali, you be Kuan Yin, you be Buddha, you be Rudra, you be Christ, you be Krishna, you be Shiate Wiles, you be Sintala and Doki, you be Lucero, you be Elegba, you be Ursuli Danto, you be Ursuli Freda, you be Dambala, you be Ayuedo, you be La Baline, you be Azata, you be Grand you be La Sarina. You be Sindhi. You be the Ogan. You be the Mambo. You be Ran Ibo. You be Man Man Rijipo. You be Baron Samit. You be Masala. You be the Petro. You be the Rana. You be Agwe. You be Marasa. You be Orisha Oko. You be Gemini. You be Shu. You be Tef. You be Geb. You be Nut. You be Set. You be Nebuchadnezzar. You be Kansu. You be Knu. You be Men. You be Men Chuta. You be Nut. You be never ten. You be never hear. You be net. You be the nature. You be the nature. You be the noon. You be patah. You be. You be. 
I'm on the right. You be segment. You be circuit. You be set shot. You be the supreme. You be the all encompassing intelligence. You be the body. You be the cop. You be the body. You be Allah. You be the Christ. You be the 13th Zodiac. Go to the center and be. I give it to my egg Grandma, you are the glue that keeps both sides of my family together. I'm thankful. Grandpa, you are the consonant. Ogun, you are the strength of my family. You are the iron will of my own imagination. I will lose my conscious thought and go into the ground. Peace, 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 peace. And welcome, one and all, to another segment of Foundational Friday on Enlightenment and Transformation. My name is Yuya, and I want to welcome you all who are listening right now. And I want to welcome you all who will be listening to this much later. Like I always say, however you get here, it's cool. Just just stop on by. So, um, this show, the title of the show and the subject is uh, Lukumi. L U C U M I. Lukumi. And I bet uh, a lot of you who are consistent listeners of this experience are familiar with Lukumi, or at least familiar with, you've heard the word before, you've heard of the system even if you you don't have familiarity in terms of its workings. And um, I'm not going to do the Lukumi show tonight. (laughs) I'm going to explain why. Uh, It's the same reason that I didn't do the Condomble show last strong. Um, You know, as you all know, when I do these segments, pretty much most things I do, there's, I'm kind of like a, calculated risk taker so uh that's a form of like organized confusion or um premeditated improvisation improvisation so the shows are improv and they're ad lib but i mean i think usually about maybe five or ten minutes before the show comes on and i say okay what i want to talk about and then i i go uh and then sometimes i don't talk about that thing (laughs) because it just it doesn't feel right so um i had a whole series that i was going to do on candomblé lukumi santeria maybe even uh division 21 bruja sciences hoodoo voodoo a couple other ones right but um every time i try to conjure up a thought in terms of maybe uh the perspective that i want to speak about i can't come up with anything all right, nothing nothing really comes to mind except for no. <laughs> a loud no. So uh, it's not time. The timing is just not right for those segments. So for all of you who came ready to get the Lukumi breakdown, like we did the Spiritual Baptist or Shango Baptist breakdown, uh, I have to inform you that's not going to happen this evening. I'm not sure when it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But. I go with spirit, you know, I don't really care so much about the calendar in that sense. When I'm 
um, doing ministry. And those of you who have done spiritual work with me, you know, you know, you, you know, um, there's times when we're doing work and, um, you know, I'll say, hey, we're going to start at 10, 10 p.m. And we don't start to 5 a.m., <laughs> you know, because I, I got to go with the vibes. And if the vibes are not right, then uh, there's no point in doing anything. Um, so I'll give you some background on why I know it's not time to do those segments. And I think you may get something out of that. Um, so, you know, Lukumi is a spiritual tradition, right? Like Santeria is a spiritual tradition. A lot of times we say Yoruba, like, oh, I practice Yoruba, or the Yoruba tradition, but there, that really, that doesn't really exist. I mean, Yoruba is a language, you know? Um, so it's not, you know, you're practicing Ife or Ifa, or you're practicing Orisha. That's really what it is. You know, um, but a lot of times we'll say Yoruba because that what we're really implying is that I'm practicing it in a way where I'm I'm more um, aligned with the traditional form of the of the the spirituality. So it's not century. I don't have any inclusions of maybe diasporic elements in it. I'm trying to align myself as closely to the Nigerian uh, form or the Nigerian charters of the system as I possibly can. So we'll say, okay, I practice Yoruba, right? But uh, again, there's no there's no specific Yoruba religion. I mean, you go to Yoruba land, you're gonna meet a lot of Christians and Muslims. So, you know, <laughs> if we were gonna speak about a predominant uh, religion or anything like that. But, you know, dealing with Lukumi and dealing with Santeria and, and a lot of the other systems that have um, strong influences and, and strong implementation uh, from the diasporic experience, even down to the language. I mean, you're dealing with Lukumi, you have a language. It's almost like a language unto its own. You know, some of the terms that are used, you have you have to have some understanding of the Spanish piece to understand the Yoruba words at the same time, because they, they meld a lot of them together. You know, um, same thing with Candomblé. You look at the spellings of things and whatnot. Um, so you have to kind of have an understanding of the culture to really appreciate um, the adaptations, right? That's what we spoke about last night, remember? Adapting. So as I thought about it, I said, you know, it's not really time to do those segments because people, uh, in many senses, a lot of people, not everybody, but one of the epidemics that we have uh, that hopefully we're going to eventually at some point work through and cure uh, in our spiritually conscious community. Uh, one of the sad epidemics is the proliferation of um, unqualified individuals presenting themselves as elders or presenting themselves as priests, presenting themselves as chiefs, you know, presenting themselves as as um, just authorities on different things that they they don't really have any or haven't any really had any real access to. So sometimes this comes because or this sense of entitlement comes to like a title, <laughs> you know, entitlement. Right. Um, because we don't really teach the rite of passage of things. We don't really teach the process. Like uh, you don't just jump to the door and say, OK, make me this. In fact, most of the time, if you're allowed to even come through the door, you keep your mouth shut, you know, and um, the humility and the attitude and the spirit of someone who would practice some of these traditions in the right way, a lot of times is lost on us because of the way the culture is here. The culture here, especially American culture, whether you're a male or a female, it's about a lot of machismo. You know, so it's about, a, you know, a lot of it is like, no, you take what you want, you go get it, snatch it, you know, you demand it, you paid your money, now give me this, because it's such a consumer-based culture. Whereas in other places, you know, you got to really go through a process, and it's a certain way that you have to learn. So if someone calls you a king or a queen or a chief, the title is well-earned. And in, and in some instances, you can't get the title, no matter how much you kick and scream, because... It comes through blood. 
And you're going to say, who was your father? Who was your father's father? You know, um, so you can't just buy a title. You can't just become a title. Right. So it's the same thing with a lot of these traditions. Sometimes, you know, I look at certain speakers. I was having this conversation with somebody this morning and we were talking about a, uh, a teacher in particular. And we were saying and he ended up um, having some issues and uh, with his with his health. And one of the things that we both noted was that this was an individual who kind of spoke about a lot of different spiritual traditions and not necessarily always in a respectful manner. And he kind of jumped into a lot of different stuff and didn't really get the understanding of those different things he was jumping into. You know, it was just kind of like a cursory understanding of them, but then just jumped out, started teaching them you know, or teaching rituals around them and things like that. And if you're not built for that, if your nervous system isn't built for it, yeah, you can have the conversation, you can have the experience, but it's it's not going to be healthy for you. You're going to damage yourself. Um, so sometimes as I, as I think about even the things that I teach myself, I have to be very careful. I know everybody says, oh, you give so much, you teach so much. You know, you guys think I teach a lot and I probably do. I don't know. But trust me, uh, the information I'm giving you in terms of what I've been taught and what I've experienced, I mean, we're pretty much still in kindergarten. Uh, I haven't even begun to truly tap into the information, you know. So even though it may seem like a lot, it's, um, it's probably a lot of information, but it's a lot of information at a level. You know, I ascend very slowly. Because I make sure that people are digesting what's in front of them. Sometimes we have a tendency not to, you know. Um, so as I, I looked at the Santeria and the Lukumi and the different shows, I said, you know, I don't think the audience is ready yet for my perspective on that. Because if it's presented incorrectly and irresponsibly, it will cause people to disrespect those traditions. And that's one of the, the sad epidemics we have in the community. A lot of times you see people just jump into stuff, you know, basically they 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 appropriate someone else's culture in order to monetize it. You know, and and cultural appropriation is basically when you take someone's traditions and customs without permission, you know, especially without having a linkage to that custom or that tradition, you know. So a lot of times you'll see people who will maybe get a book on. Oh, OK, here we go. A person will maybe have a very promiscuous past. Right. And then they'll read a book or probably won't even go that far as reading a book, but they'll see a show or listen to a podcast on Oshun. And she's a love goddess. And they say, oh, I love her. I, you know, as soon as I heard about it, I just fell in love with her. I just fell in love with, you know, it, she's about beauty and it's not. So then they say, I must be a daughter of Oshun. And now they go out and they start teaching Oshun stuff. And nine times out of ten, it's not really Oshun stuff. Like, here's a good example. We really push hard this color yellow for Oshun. All right? And you ask you ask 20 people, why is there a color yellow? They couldn't give you an answer. I guarantee you couldn't give you an answer. Not a real answer. They say, oh, because yellow's color is sunflowers. So, okay, and? <laughs> they may tell you the story about when she was washing a dress in the river and it turned from white to yellow. But, okay, but why is it yellow? You know, um, they say, oh, well, that's amber. That's the color of amber. OK. And what's with the amber? You know, so it's like people co-opt things without really understanding, because the truth is you'd be hard pressed to go to Nigeria and find yellow shrines for Oshun. Hard pressed. I've not really seen it. That's an American thing you find shrines with the color blue because she represents water. You see? So sometimes it's little things like that, you know, that um, we're not introduced to in proper time. And we jump out there before we should jump out there expecting certain results and a certain relationship with certain energies that we really shouldn't, you know? And um, 
sometimes that disrespect or that feeling of entitlement or instant gratification comes from irresponsible teachers who are not really teachers but they're just irresponsibly like shotguns they think they find something in the book and they say okay boom here and then they want to assimilate everything with everything else oh that's just this oh su ain't nothing but christ su is the christ and, and christ is nothing but a form of this and this and that and that and that, and that. i'll teach you about the correlations but i don't say these energies are the same thing because they're not just like Lukumi is not Santeria. Santeria is not Division 21. It's not. Um, Santeria is not the, the light side or the good side of Palo. It's not. We're dealing with totally, totally different systems. For instance, in Lukumi, you're not going to find all those saints like that. They're not as prevalent as they are in Santeria. You know, um, and it's not to say anything against any of them. It's not that it's just it's just to specify that there is a lot of work that's going into these systems, you know, um, and you just hearing about it for 10 minutes on a radio show and your lazy gene kicking in. And you say, man, I ain't got to study that because, I, you know, I got a feeling I have a feeling that that's just this and that's just that. And then you call somebody on their podcast show who doesn't know themselves. And they'd be like, isn't it true? And you'll ask Chris, like, isn't it true that such and such is just this? And they'd be like, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. I, that's what I thought. That's what I figured. I knew I had to go through all this. But then you're still not shown any real examples of power. So something should tell you something. Like, maybe you do got to go through some of that. Some of it. Yeah, go through all of it. And you think things have changed. We've evolved and adapted. But some of this stuff is still necessary. You know, so I said I need to do these shows in a different way. I need to really do the shows in a way where I can help to instill the respect for these systems. And as a note, I'm not initiated in any of those. I'm not initiated in Santeria. I'm not initiated in Lukumi um, or any of those those type of systems. OK, I've worked with people in them. And I've been to a lot of their ceremonies and stuff, but no initiations in those systems. And uh, I have no interest in having any initiations in those systems. So just so you know, this I'm, I'm not speaking. I'm, I'm speaking as an outsider. But ultimately, we come back to the same root of the same tree. And it's, we're supposed to be dealing with Ifa. We're supposed to be dealing with the Risha. OK, and the respect for that has to be develop first and then once the respect for that is developed then we can start talking about the offshoots and why different offshoots became what they became what what the intention was what their mission is what their message is but we got to start showing a little bit more respect i know when we come into consciousness we we have this like um disdain for religion and for religious people and i get it and a lot of times that disdain is because, you know, we, we were hurt by some of those systems. You know, some of those those systems did us a little dirty. So because of that, you know, we take on this like the heck with all of them, you know, and um, that's not always the best. <laughs> that's not always the best approach. You know, that's not always the best approach because you can learn. And a lot of the stuff that you guys are learning, even in the occult world, comes as a as a, a gift from some of these traditions. People people de dedicating themselves completely to a certain system or a certain culture. And usually those systems and cultures, just so you know, associated with um, a geographic region. You know, it's just like you wanting to. um Oh, and the Q&A is up, by the way. If anybody wants to click the Q&A button, you could do that and ask questions because, you know, we're doing a hangout. And I know I said I was going to answer those questions today. I'll probably answer them Sunday. I felt like I needed to really address this. I needed to make this a precursory statement before I even went into the shows because I want you to receive them right. I really do. And especially me speaking as an outsider to those particular traditions. Um, and I'm referring to Santeria, Lukumi, just so you, so you know, um, I'm, I'm not saying 
that I'm an outsider to Orisha or Ifa tradition. In fact, the opposite is very true. I'm very much an insider. Uh, but some of the offshoots I have not invested my time or energy into. Uh, that's just not where I wanted to be. And it's just not where I want to be now. Uh, and it's not a strike against those systems. Okay. To be very clear, it's not a strike against them. I, I do have probably some some issues with some of them. Um, but the people who created those systems are older than I am. You know, the individuals who developed Lukumi and invested days and nights into upholding those traditions and teaching people the traditions and initiating the people into those traditions, you know, Santeria as well, Division 21 as well, New Orleans Voodoo as well, uh, not to be confused with Voodoo. Um, those individuals are much older than I am. They're elders. So I would make no mistake to disrespect them in any shape, form or fashion, even if I do not adhere to their ways and their movements, because I'm sure I've learned a thing or two from some of their students you know probably something that i've shared on one of these shows one day um has come from a conversation i may have had with someone in one of those systems so there is good fruit still being produced and we have to show that respect you know if the divine is in it see the divine respect the divine we can't be arrogant about anything just because we got a couple of books or uh, we claim to be a student of a certain person. And like I was telling somebody this dawning, a lot of people claim to be my student, but I don't have that many students. All right. I don't have that many real students. Um, student is somebody you're working with. You're passing down not only this is how you do this ritual, this is how you do this ritual, but you're passing down a tradition to, and you're putting a certain obligation and responsibility on them as it pertains to sustaining your community and your land. And I'm going to tell you something real slick. So you really get this stuff too. You really, 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 really can't understand this stuff until you're standing on the land where this stuff is being done. So I'll repeat that. You really cannot understand this stuff. And when I say this stuff, I'm saying the spiritual work and the spiritual movement until you're standing on the land where these things are done. Like consistently where that is the culture of that land. So then that may make you say, well, where's the land for this and for that and for that? Hmm. If there's no land associated with it, it's not real. That's the trick. Think about with um, with the with with the what we like to say the so-called Jews did when they needed to establish themselves as a power and needed to establish a place where they could go in the event that they were ever threatened with another Holocaust. They established themselves in Israel because they knew that they could not be a people, they could not be a nation without a connection to a land, a piece of land. This is something they spoke about. But you know where they went before Israel? A lot of people don't know this one. They first went to West Africa. They went to the Akan. That's where they actually tried to set up their first um, quote unquote holy land. And the Akan said, uh-uh, <laughs> it was not happening. It, it just wasn't, they just didn't open the door up for that. And um, then they went to Israel. But either way, uh, and just like, you know, you learn that language, Hebrew, you know, you, you're going to see words that are very similar to Yoruba, words that are very similar to to Chui. You know, the, the, the words are very similar. You find a lot of the same words. There's a reason for that, you know. But, um, my ultimate point is what I'm saying to you that I'm saying to you is that a lot of you who feel like 
you're a part of something or you're doing something, you're students of this one and students of that one, you have to make sure that if it's really about nation building or spiritually nation building, even if you're just building a spiritual nation, that there has to be a connection to a physical center point. Usually that's a shrine. And it might be something there that may be where the cemetery is for other adherents. Or there may be some divine instrument that was given and things are based and built around that. Like if you go to the, to the south, go to some of those old Masonic lodges. You're going to see old, you know, uh, preserve black men's penises down in the basements and in the back rooms when they was doing all the lynchings. Well, they still do. And those penises became the centerpieces for those shrines. I mean, there's a reason. I mean, you gotta know by now. There's a reason they used to cut their bodies up like that. You know, that was that was the ritual of a, a ritual of Osor, as they say, Osiris. The mysteries of Osiris within the initiate pyramid, as they call it. Um. So yeah, you gotta understand the land that these things come from and these traditions come from. And I I urge you to touch the land. You know, and when you're trying to develop yourself as a spiritual adherent and as a spiritual worker and a spiritual traveler, develop a connection with some land where those spirits can thrive. You know, and what you want to really connect with is not just a landmass, but a landmass community. Where when you walk through the streets of said community or you do something in your yard or your compound, um, your neighbors can participate or can encourage the work that you're actually doing. You know, that's really the the angle and the perspective that you have to come from if you really want to learn this stuff. If you really so even people practice Lukumi, you know, they can always trace back to landmass. Palo trace back to landmass. I mean a lot of times in Palo the land the tracing back is to the Congo. You know, um Santeria traces back to a landmass. You know, even hoodoo. You say, oh, yeah, the southern hoodoo workers. New Orleans voodoo. You see, voodoo will take you to Benin. For those of us who say, yeah, we, we practice Yoruba in a form that is more in alignment with Nigerian customs, then we can always trace our connection to Nigeria. You want to be, be able to do that with whatever it is that you're touching. You have to have a central land. You have to have that balancing point. So I want to deal with that for a little while first, because I feel like sometimes YouTube, blog talk, and online teachers, they just talk too much. <laughs> and you know what it is? Um, it's because you don't get that immediate feedback sometimes. You got to tap in with your psychic mind to the people who are listening. And you got to determine what it is that they need. That's why a lot of times I do my shows, people say, that show was right on time. If you look at the comments on my shows, at least every other show, that comment is there. That was right on time. I needed that. It's because I'm flowing with spirit. I mean, if you had it up to me, I'd probably be talking about something totally different. You know, I wanted to do a whole series on Hitler. I felt that would be very interesting to just deal with the occult and psychological mind manipulation tactics that he used to use, the way that he went about nation building. But it's, it's not the time to learn about people like Hitler. You know? And maybe some people are not ready to hear about that. You know, you say certain names, people just, they let their emotions get in front of the truth. Say, why, why are you talking about Hitler? What, what, you support that? You know, they don't even, you can't, talk to them they don't think you know like if i started talking about christmas right now oh now you celebrate christmas i might be breaking christmas down you know but some people are just not ready for that you know there's a lot of foolish people on the internet you'd be surprised so yeah so i, I flow with spirit and because of that most of the time i'm on time you know people will say oh i needed that that was right on time i needed that you know so what we need right now what we really need. I'm drinking something, so just give me a moment here. What we really need right now is to learn how to approach the world with less Western savagery, with less demands, 
we need to learn how to be silent like babies you know this is i broke brought this up before and broke it down this is the the science of the baby christ that's why they always show that image of the baby christ because it represents silence to the world you know a baby haru it's silence it's, it's being the the one who's served by the world but knows when to be silent to it there's no ego you don't have to assert you know <laughs> i was talking to someone on the phone recently they were doing that they asked me to teach them something so they called me and uh as i was breaking down when i was breaking the whole time the, the guy was going ah ah of course of course ah, ah like over like i couldn't even focus on what i wanted to say he was so loud and then as i'm saying he's like of course yeah that makes sense because it's a, and he's embellishing on what i'm saying well if you know so much then what am i on the phone for see people don't know how to be the humble just just be quiet shut up <laughs> you know if you're asking for help shut up receive the help you, there'll come a time when you can speak when people will ask you for help but people don't want to go through that that baby process it hurts them to be quiet to just be silent doesn't have to be noise all the time that time in between what is the silence between silence and noise that's the combination silence and noise is where you you process it's the number zero silence is zero noise is one you need them both in order to create a reality and the further you you're away from your divine source, the more you need silence and noise. That's why music is so instrumental. And why do we use music most of the time to get us in the mood? Well, what mood are we getting in? Into our God mood. So we play music, we drum, we dance, because you need a lot of zero and one sometimes, because you're so far away from your real self. Then you find when you get closer to your real self, you don't want the music. The beat of your heart is enough. Abba, 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 Abba. That's the sound the heart makes. Abba. Father. Or soul of the flesh. Abba. You see? So I want to deal with that for a little while first, people. Um, I know you guys are ready for your Lukumi notes. But I don't want to be responsible for turning out... Um, certain types of people onto the, the planet and i say this sometimes to people and i'll say it to you i'll give you this advice sometimes you make people too important too soon they act up i've experienced that you know sometimes people will come into um the class or whatever and i'll give them a lot students says none of my students know i tend to give a lot so i'll spend extra time with them um or some of you guys know I'm famous for those three hour readings or those two and a half hour readings and it's just be an hour and I don't say no send me money no no just it's okay I got you giving 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 and then what happens it backfires because people didn't feel that they're more important than what they really are and they start acting up because of it instead of being gracious and saying wow this person really gave me a lot they say yeah I should have got that that's right <laughs> you know and then they act even worse so i have to be careful about um sometimes how much i give even how much i give now i notice that the attitude it creates sometimes you know that's why when i would tell people like, ah yeah ah, right you know now if i would have said okay because that was a free call if i would have been like okay you could talk to me about this thing but it's gonna cost you five hundred dollars for half an hour of my time he wouldn't have been making all those noises. <laughs> he would have been dead silent writing his notes. You know, he wouldn't have felt so important. So sometimes you got to be careful with that, especially those of you who are out there teaching. Even when you're in a relationship, don't let people feel so important so quickly just because they say they're important. Let them earn it. You know, they'll act better. So that's what we're going to do on this journey learning about these different religious systems we're gonna approach it like babies that's how i'm gonna get you you're gonna be like babies really nice respectful kind babies i'm gonna teach you the information 
And then you'll probably go out after that and speak to some people from those traditions. And you approach them respectfully and kindly. As opposed to saying, oh, yeah, well, I know, but I know all right. Like somebody called me. I have, well, I've gotten that call more than once. Yeah, I know all about the Orishas. I know about, I had a woman say that to me once. She wanted to study with me. And she said, well, I read your book and I know all about the Orishas. And I've and I been, and I've been work with the, the uh, Kemetic thing. And I, and I know all about the, the Kemets. And she said, I said, the Kemets? What? <laughs> and even when she was saying Orishas, she kept pronouncing it wrong. The Orishas. She was like, I know about the Orishas. I know about the Kemets. I read your book. I know all that stuff, but I, I feel like there's more. Yeah, the more is for you to actually go learn about it. Because if you can't pronounce it, then obviously you don't know anything about it. Like when people say, yeah, yeah I know what you're doing. You're doing that Yoruba stuff. Hmm? <laughs> if you can't pronounce it, then you ain't, you ain't been too exposed to it. Come on now. Let's keep it real. Let's be honest. You know? We got to stop assuming that traditions that have taken people millions of years to fine tune that you're going to figure out in a month of YouTube watching. You, you know, you'll, you'll get exposure to it at a level that you never would have, which is wonderful. But to really learn these things and the understanding, you got to get into them. You really got to get into them. You know, and I'm not saying it's got to take 20 years or 10 years or even five years, but it's 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 got to take some commitment it's definitely got to take some commitment and i know a lot of people are afraid of that um because they just seem like once you say you got to commit to something or you have to become something else um they take that offensively like you're hiding something yeah i've had that happen to people say well tell me about this tell me more about that sometimes you get in people call my show on sundays well i'm i'm trying to find out about why are you trying to find out about that for what and you'll hear me say, what are you going to do with this information? And then you they start stuttering. Um, well, well, first, I mean, I'm going to learn it. And then once I learn it, then I can share it. Stop lying. You think I don't know a liar when I hear one? You ain't going to do nothing with it. You're, you're a lifetime student of nothing. You ain't do nothing. You're not going to share it. You're not going to minister to the people. You're not going to help anybody with it. You're just using it as a supplement to a supplement to your ego to alleviate the pain you feel about your failures. Well, I can learn about this deep stuff. And if somebody's talking about Arisha, I'll find out about something else outside of that that goes beyond it. Whatever you're doing, I'm going to do something else. Sometimes you find that in marriages. You know, the wife will be a churchgoer. And the husband will just out of rebellion. He wants to go do something. Else. Well, I'm gonna go to the mosque <laughs> just cause he doesn't care either way. It's just that I gotta be. It's gotta be this. I gotta be able to one up you. I gotta be able to talk about stuff that you don't know about. And you have a lot of that in this. And we can't be like that. We're not gonna grow that way. We're not gonna grow. We gotta be a lot more loving than that. I know we have uh, a lot of natural propensities um, for dominance. And that's because we, we confuse what power is. Power is not control of your environment. That's not power. So we say, if I know more than everybody else, that means I can control the environment. Power is connection to the soul. That's real power. Your environment has so little to do with it. That's just an after effect of having true soul connection. Then you end up affecting the environment anyway but why would you truly want to control an environment that other souls are in that means you want to dominate them too you know so sometimes our approach is a little off and like i said i just don't want to be a part of that so i'm going to teach you we're going to do the show but i'm going to start you off a little different and you may not like it <laughs> you may not like it um but I never give you what you need, what you want. I always give you what you need. I don't really care about what you want. I really could care less, to be honest with you. I mean, I take some of the show suggestions. And if the show, su the show suggestions are they express a need and I'm seeing that collective need, then I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get into it. But sometimes people just want stuff. You hear when they call the shows. I don't answer their questions. 
some Sundays is not the time for dream interpretation. Or like last Sunday, Brother Bookman called him an issue with his job. It wasn't the time for that. Let's deal with this other higher stuff. Then the job won't even be an issue anymore. We got to stop chasing our tails around. I'd rather give you some stronger stuff that's going to really affect and improve your lives. Because you got to ask yourself that. You're doing all this spiritual stuff. You're learning all this stuff. Does your life look any different? And not just yours, is the life of the people around you look different. And not just because you're preaching to them, but because you're a better person to be around. Because you're a more healing agent to be around. You find your, your family is starting to eat a little better. You know, they're doing more healthy things without you saying anything. Is your circle of friends becoming more reflective of the deities that you study in all these books? And I don't mean the lower, the lower base nature of those deities. Is it really starting? Is your friends really starting to look like the super friends? Or, or are you noticing even more how debased and low energy and low vibrational the people around you are? If that's the case, then what you're doing isn't ascending you out of your space. That's what's supposed to be happening. Your ascension doesn't just happen when you die. Because you want to be a spirit, an evolving spirit. So remember, whatever it is that you're consistently doing here on the planet is what you're going to do in the next world. It's that same momentum. It's the inertia that keeps going. So if you're waiting to ascend or you're waiting for some Messiah to come back, then when you get to that next space, you're going to be doing the same exact thing. Waiting. I don't think that's what you want. I really don't. You're going you're gonna to haunt somebody's house for the next 500 years? Or you're going to be one of those spirits. I'm, I'm moving. I'm on the move. I'm evolving. I'm becoming the new next thing. Just think about it. You know, Gladys Knight has been making hits since the 50s. I'm just saying. <laughs> How is that related? It's it's very related. But anyway, that's been our foundational fire. I don't want to talk on this too much. I'm going to get into the teachings, but I just wanted to speak to you about what needed to happen first and what I've been seeing and what I haven't liked. Um, I'm seeing too much people posturing themselves to something because they assume that they know something that they really don't know. And, you know, I'm not one to try to embarrass people. And say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, um, if you say, you know, OK, fine. But uh, when you start when you start dealing with people, because people take their religions very seriously, you know, and like I said, thinking about the individual we were talking about earlier today who um, suffered that health issue. Uh, I know it was not only because of he wasn't maintaining his health, but it was also because of some of the disrespect he showed towards some of these systems, you know. We can't be so built up and puffed up because we have a large library or we read a lot and think that that makes us any better than anyone else. It really doesn't. You know, you got to apply that stuff. And then after you apply it, there's stuff that you don't get out of the books. There's wisdom and information that comes to you that you can't find anywhere else. Some people are always ask me, where you get with you from? Can you tell me this? Can you tell me that? What book did you get that out of from? I don't remember. It starts to blend in after a while. I don't know if it's from the books or from conversations or if it's from meditations. I don't know. Because I'm that immersed in it. But I could tell you, I don't read half as much as you guys might think I do. Not anymore. I used to. I mean, four hours a day. That was my minimal mark. I had to do four hours a day every day. I've been doing four hours a day. When did I start that? 1991 four hours of, of reading and study. well really reading but reading and study but sometimes just straight reading i started that at 91 and i stopped doing that around 2000 and 2006 is when i stopped doing that okay so from 91 to 2006 i read and studied four hours a day that was my mandate that i, I put that on myself that was my mandate also there was 
fasting included in that and all kind of other stuff. But just the reading, that's what I had to do every day. You know, <laughs> now I enjoy audiobooks. That's that's my thing. I mean, I've spent so many hours sitting and reading and reading and reading. Now I really enjoy just pop it in a, a audio book. I'm saying pop it in like as a cassette, right? <laughs> well, it used to be for me, but just listening to an audio book and letting somebody else do the reading for me and just closing my eyes and thinking about what they're saying. You know. But all right. I'll see you all Sunday on Chief Speaks. Until such time. Major.